and all day long he's been dealing with me concerning one topic the danger of letting go Luke chapter number 9 as everyone is standing across this house in reverence to the word of God I won't make you staying alone tonight I'm only going to read probably one verse Verse number 62. The Bible said, And Jesus said unto him, No man. Somebody say that. No man. That means nobody. That means good for some, but not other. But no man. Not one person. Substitute that in there. Not one person having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. Wow. No man having put his hand to the plow, looking back, it is fit. That word fit, it means usable or useful. Jesus said no man that puts his hand on the plow. He didn't say anything about letting go. He said, no man that put his hand on the plow and looks back is usable to me in this kingdom. Somebody shout amen. Lift your hands to heaven. Lay your Bible down. Lift your hands to heaven. Pray for us tonight. God, we love you. We, got, we honor you tonight for what we feel in this house. We honor you for your word. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is life. It is healing. It is truth. It's what sanctifies us. It's what keeps us. Your word's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Without your word, we're lost. We don't even know which way to go. We ask tonight, God, that you would anoint this vessel of clay for a while to speak only what you want said in this house tonight. Nothing more. Nothing less. And I know there's lost in these seats tonight, God. I know there's backsliders in these seats tonight. I pray the Holy Ghost would begin to deal with their hearts. And I pray tonight there will be no division, no hindrances, no distractions in this house. But every man and woman of God would open their heart tonight to receive the word. And if the word stings a little, if it, if it pierces the heart a little, let us not withdraw from it, God. But let us draw closer to it. Because you're talking to us through your word. I love you tonight. Thank you for refuge. Thank you for these two amazing years. <laughs> Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're going to do, God. In Jesus' name, shake somebody's hand or next to you. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. This is a, uh, we must deal with, with, with some of the scripture because some have taken this out of context, this one scripture, so we must put it in context. I mean, there's a lot of people take one scripture from here and one scripture from here, and they just twist it around and make it what they want it to say. Instead of, you can't just pick one scripture and just pluck it out. You need to see how it's written and where it's written and what's going on with that scripture. Jesus is here with some disciples. And there's some people that came to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, we want to be with you. We feel like it's our call. Like it's what we're here on earth to do is to follow you, Jesus. How many of you ever said that tonight, Lord? I've been placed on it just to follow the Lord. That's, and how many knows that's why we're all here tonight? We're all here to, that we might follow him and be disciples. And all of a sudden it came to pass that as they went the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord. Notice how he called him Lord. Lord means master. He was saying, Master, Jesus, you are my master. You are my Lord. He said, I will follow thee wherever soever thou goest. He said, Lord, there's not a place that you can go tonight, but what I won't walk with you. And all of a sudden, Jesus looked at him. He wasn't being mean tonight, but he wanted this man to understand the, the, the statement that it was making and what it was going to cost him in order to follow him. How many knows there is a price for you to pay if you are going to follow Jesus? <laughs> Woo! Jesus said unto him, I'm going to put it in English tonight. Jesus said, sir, I'm homeless. He said, when I go tonight to sleep, I don't have a home to go to. He said, you see these foxes that are walking around? They've got some 
holes to crawl in tonight. And you see all the birds and the fowls of the air. So they've got nests that they're going to go lie in tonight. And they've got a place that they can go to, a place prepared for them. He said, but if you're going to follow me, then you got to understand I don't even have a place to lay my head tonight. What was he telling that man? Hallelujah. He was telling that man, in the life that I'm living, we do not hold value in the things of this world. The things of this world are nothing more than mere distractions. We are not worried about houses and lands and cars and we're not worried about promotions and we're not worried about better clothes. Somebody shout amen to that. Amen. Jesus is saying I'm not worried amen about the things down here that the Gentiles seek so much but he said the Bible said seek you first the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Somebody shout amen to me tonight. I begin to think about some of us tonight, it would do us really, really good. Amen. If we were to lose every single thing that we had in our lives, sometimes it would do us good. Amen. Amen. To go through a, amen, a hard time, a, a struggle, or a trial. Amen. So we can finally realize that the things of this world, they do not amount to anything. Some of us can't sit down and eat unless we have the absolute, help me, Holy God, the absolute best on our plate. Amen, we can't go, amen, to Crystal and buy a 79 cent bottle and how much they cost no more. Amen, but we have to have the best on our plate. Amen, there's, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen, I would to God that some of us would get so poor again that we had to go back to eating vine or sausage. And somebody say amen to me. Now with some of us tonight, we realize, amen, money has done nothing but distract us from what we are supposed to be doing in the kingdom of heaven. I wish some of us would have to go back to eating the value time bread. Amen. Spaghetti rings. That ain't even Chef Boyardi. And probably didn't come from Kroger or Walmart. But it probably come from Save You More or Save A Lot. I come to tell you tonight, it is time we realize the things of this world, they are not valuable, but they are only mere distractions to you and your plowing in the kingdom of God. Amen. The devil wants to wave the carrot in front of the horse for us to get better and be better and obtain more. But what I've come to tell the devil tonight is I don't want the world's carrot anymore. But what I'm desiring tonight is to see the house of God for. Amen. Not with somebody else's members. Amen, but with winos uh, and the drunkards uh, and addicts uh, and those that are on their way to hell. Uh, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen, be able to lay hands on the sick uh, and see them recover. Uh, I have no time to worry uh, about the distractions of the world. Somebody shout amen. It's all right tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus said it's a big statement for you to make saying that you want to go and that you want to be with me, that you want to walk with me. He said you, Jesus wasn't being mean, but he did not want this man to start a journey and in the middle of the journey to turn around and go back. Somebody say amen. Come help me, Lord. I ain't got to my message yet. The Bible said and he said to another, follow me. Jesus looked at the man. He said, will you come and will you follow me? And all of a sudden he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and to bury my father. He said, my daddy, he's an old man. And I'm sure he's probably on his last leg. I'm sure he don't have much life to live. Let me go down there and take care of mom and dad. Amen. Tell me, Holy Ghost, it's going to get tight for a minute. Amen. Until he's gone. And after he's gone, Lord, I'm going to come and I'll follow you. Amen. Jesus said, why don't you let the dead amen, bury their dead? Somebody say amen to me. Jesus ain't telling you, amen, not to go to your daddy's funeral. Jesus ain't telling you, amen, not to go to your mama's funeral. But what the Lord is saying, even if you put your family 
If you put your family in a position higher than what I am, he said, as a matter of fact, if you love your father, your mother more than I, than you do me, if you don't hate them, and not literally to hate them, but compared to the love that you have for the Lord, it would almost look like hate. He said, if you don't put me first, he said, then you're not worthy. Amen. To follow me and be my disciple. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of y'all give me excuses why you can't come to church because little Miss Sally Sue and Bobby Joe got all kind of stuff in the world and you stay too busy but you don't put them on the back burner and put God for y'all ain't going to talk to me tonight are you Come on, somebody shout amen. If your children are hindering you from coming to church, you need to change your lifestyle. Come on, somebody. It's going to get tight for a minute. Amen, but listen. Amen, well, we had tent revival. My little girl, Hannah, come here, baby. She knows daddy loves to stand up there in the stands and holler and yell. Get him, little Gilbert. Amen, I love her. Amen, maybe it was Emma. Come here, she stay right here with me. Come here, Emma. Amen, my girls had ball games while we were in the middle. Amen, a tent revival. Amen, and somebody said you didn't go. Amen, to be with your children. Oh, no, I didn't. Why? Because God called me to be a disciple first. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me tonight. Jesus said, if you put more value on your family than what you do me, it said you are not worthy to be my disciple. And then that little baby want to stay at home just because it's sorry, because it's lazy, and mom and dad won't come to Sunday school because they can't get that little critter out of bed. I come to tell you tonight, you better get your house in order, and you better get it right. You better put God first, and him first alone in your Life. Give him a shout of praise tonight. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get to my message tonight. I ain't even there yet. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Y'all still love me? Molly? Still here? Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, you cannot put the needs of your children and the extracurricular activities in your children's life before the Lord. Somebody say amen to me. Pass what? Go in debt to their eyeballs to put their little baby, help me Lord, in everything in the world. And let me tell you something. I understand my girls love to play basketball, but basketball ain't first in our life. Jesus is first. And I'm not going to go in debt. I'm not going to do all that stuff to put them in training and athletic things to improve their ability. I don't mind working with them and making them be the best that they can be. But I'm not putting my life on hold as I promise you neither one of them's going to make it to the NBA and make millions of dollars. But I do know this much. I stand before the Lord one day and say, Son, did you put your family before me? Did you place more value on their sports than you did me? Give him a shout of praise tonight. Do you want to be his disciple? All of a sudden, another said, Lord, I'll follow you. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, no man, having put his hand on the plow and look back as fit, amen, or usable in my kingdom, no man that has started out a journey, amen, but decides to turn around and look back and go another way. Jesus said, I can't use a man like that. What was wrong with him going and saying bye? Amen, Jesus was reading that man's heart. There was something else he would rather be doing than being with the Lord. I got news for you tonight. If there's anything else in your life that you'd rather be doing than serving the Lord, honey, you are not right with God and you need to get saved. Give your life to the Lord. Amen, somebody help me tonight. This is kind of hard. Amen, but I got news saw you tonight and for the devil amen I put my hands on a plow amen about 19 years ago and I know the devil's trying brother John Gross amen to get me to turn around and go back home but I got news to the devil there's another row that needs me to plow tonight there's another lost soul on the outside of the house of God that needs this man of God to keep his hands on the plow 
Y'all, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I'm going to try to get through this. In order that a plowman may accomplish his work, it is necessary to look onward, to look forward. No man can plow looking to the right nor to the left. To, to be intent on his employment, not to be looking back with regret, nor even to marvel at the work that he's already done. Some folk can't do what's in front of them because they're too busy gloating and glorifying because what they've already done. Somebody say amen like you like it. Hallelujah. Folk, some folk just can't do nothing unless everybody knows about it. I can't stand to see people on Facebook and then go and feeding somebody. Say, hey, look at me. I'm feeding somebody tonight. No, you just wanted the world to see who you are. And I saw right through your facade. You're nothing but a, amen, a, help me hold it, attention, uh, wanting and, and craving. Amen, uh, what are you, what, uh, a disciple that used to be a disciple, but you ain't no more. What are you talking about, man of God? Amen, we cannot be busy being prideful about what we've done. Amen, I know God's used us to do great things, but it wasn't this man of God. It was the Lord that done it all. And I don't care how many rolls I've got hold. I ain't got time to tell Dennis. Guess how many holes I rolled out today? Guess what I done today? No, you know what? I'm gonna say, man of God, you know how many I need to do tomorrow? You know what I need to do next week? There is no time to gloat or glory in what we've already done. Shout amen. He that enters into this field, it must be. Listen to this. It, he must do it with all of his heart, with his whole heart. He that comes still loving the world, still looking with regret on his pleasure, on his wealth and his honors, that is not wholly forsaken them as a portion, cannot be a Christian and cannot be a disciple. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Why? Because unless you come to the altar saying, I do not want the world no more, you're not ready to be a disciple. Come on. Unless you come willing to lay everything you have on the altar, you have not fully repented. I told the Lord when he saved me, take everything I've got. Strip me down to nothing. Take everything I would ever have in the world. But God, I just want you to save me. And I want to be your disciple. And I want to follow Jesus. Is this all right tonight? How searching is this test? to those who profess to be Christians. And how solemn the duty of all people to renounce all earthly objects and not to be almost, but all together followers of the Son of God. Because almost ain't enough. There's only two things in this world that almost get you. Almost is good enough in horseshoes and hand grenades. But, is that right? But almost ain't gonna cut it being a disciple. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Almost, but we must be fully committed to being followers of the Son of God. It is perilous to tamper with the world. Hear me? It is perilous. Perilous means destructive. It is destructive if we tamper with the world. Brother Dennis, grab, the, grab that plow and let him. It is, grab, grab that plow, stand it up. I'm going to wheel around this way and just stand it right there. I want you to hold on that plow. It is destructive for you to take your eyes off of the row in front of you. Somebody say amen. It is destructive for you to begin to get your eyes upon the things of the world. Hey man, I know a little bit about farming, not a whole lot, but I've watched Dad and Papa operate these plows long enough that I know how to operate one of these. As a matter of fact, somebody said, where'd you get that? You got it out of our barn at home. You mean you use that? Yes, we still use it every year. Hey man. But I do understand that I would watch Papa out in the field and he'd take those reins, one here and one there, and he would harness that mule up and hook that mule. I ain't gonna make you pull it tonight, man. But he would hook that mule to that plow. And the Papa had a wonderful a team of mules at all times. But the only thing that made those mules good mules is a man that had a hold of the reins. 
Come on, somebody. Somebody said the mules was automatic. They would stay right in the line. Papa had to set a set of two or two that was automatic. But if there would have been a one time and Papa would have pulled this rein accidentally, that horse would not have known to do anything but to turn immediately to the right. He knew where to stay. But because the man behind the plow decided he was going to pull this way, the horse said, I know I'm supposed to be here, but he's telling me to go here. Come on, somebody. It is destructive. Help me, Lord. You may ever use one of these plows out in the garden, out in the field. I'm I ain't calling nobody old in this house. But there's some older folk use this. And I'm going to tell you something. Help me. You stay right there, Brother Dennis. Don't you go nowhere. You hold that plow because it'll fall if you ain't got a hold of it. Hallelujah. It is perilous to tamper with the world or to look at its pleasure, to seek its society. He that would enter to heaven must come with a heart full of love, giving all unto his hands and prepared always to give up all of his property, his health, his friends, his body, his soul to God. Everything that I have belongs to you, Lord. How many can say that with me tonight? Lord, everything I've got, it belongs to you. So if God wants to take your house tonight, are you willing to let him have it? If he cleans out your bank account tonight, are you willing to let him have it? Y'all got real quiet on me on that. He cannot, unless you are willing to do such, you cannot be a disciple. Religion is everything or nothing. He that is not willing to sacrifice everything for the cause of God is really, is he really willing to sacrifice anything or nothing? He's willing to sacrifice nothing. Somebody shout amen. But listen, I'm going to tell you what happens tonight. Amen. Not usually at home, dad is the one with a plow. And I'm the one on the tractor. We still we use a tractor with a layoff plow, old time plow. And I'm on that tractor and I'm driving the tractor in front of him. And there's two people that's got to be focused on everything that's happening. Number one, I got to be watching my right front wheel. Because when I'm in that garden, I got to keep that wheel in the line that we just previously plowed. It's got to be right on the edge of it. Because if it's not right on the edge, then the plow cannot be right. Somebody say amen. A lot of folk are trying to plow when a tractor ain't right. If you ain't saved, there ain't no way you even know how to operate the plow. Help me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I wish y'all would get in this thing tonight. I really wish you would. A lot of folk are trying to preach and teach and sing and do all kind of stuff, and they ain't never even come to the Lord. And you can't do, you can't operate that plow unless you got the right thing on the tractor. Somebody say Amen. You cannot be a disciple unless you first be born again. Jesus said, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. I, I don't care about a crocodile tear, a lay me down kind of sleep prayer. But what I want to know is your name written in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is there, then there's a plow that you got a hold of. And Jesus is showing you the way. Glory to God. I can't take my eye off the line. Y'all mind if I slow down a minute? For David, the first time I've done this, Dad said, keep that line, that wheel on that line. I said, okay, Dad. I got down. I wouldn't pay no attention, Sister Judy. I got back down to the other end of the garden and went to turn around. Dad said, stop. I stopped. He said, climb off that tractor. I got off the tractor. He said, would you look at that row? He laid off the first one. He said, is your line parallel with the one that I laid off? I said, no, sir, it's not. He said, then you know why we want them to be straight? He said, it's not because we want a pretty garden, even though we want a pretty garden. He said, but when you drift over farther than what you're supposed to, you're not going to allow me to put enough corn in the garden. Come on, somebody. That means when, I mean, when harvest time comes and I run out of corn, I can say, well, Sister Sean, that's my fault because I didn't put the rows close as I should have been because I wasn't keeping my eye on the line. 
Come on, somebody. Because, listen, every time you take your eyes off of what you're doing in the garden, you are affecting the harvest. Come on, son. Is this all right? Every time you take your eyes off of the Lord and what you're supposed to be doing for the Lord and you get to look at I mean, I don't know what I was looking at. It might have been Sister Sean in the front yard and my heart going pitter-patter and how beautiful she is. There might have been something else going on, a pretty car going down the road, but I got my eyes off the line and I began to stray and I affected the harvest. I, I come to tell you, keep your eyes on the Lord or you will affect the harvest in which you are supposed to bring unto the Lord. Shout amen. But the Lord is always going to lead us right. So it's left up to us to manage the plow. So now listen, Brother Dennis, if you're plowing, and I, I'm going to yell at you, don't you turn around and look at me. But take this hand off the plow and turn around and look at me, okay? Dennis, look at me. Take this. Whoa, what happened? To, what happened to plow? What happened? To, what happened? To, what's the front of that plow? Did you see that? Dennis, look, look at me, Dennis. Look, look at that plow. It's moving. You're going the wrong direction. The enemy's doing everything that he can today in the house of God. Somebody say, oh, wait, 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 wait. Devil's doing everything he can to get your attention on the side of the garden that you'll keep your eyes off the plow and get your eyes on the things that they used to be set on. But I got news for the devil. Amen. Like Papa, he put them on blinders on them mules that they won't be able to see nothing else going on. I want the Holy Ghost to put blinders on me. I don't want to look to the right. I don't want to look to the left. But I got a garden to hold. I got a line to lay off. I got to keep my hands on the plow. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because sometimes the devil will offer us things that looks like God. Come on now. Thank you. Holy Ghost just whooped that out of nowhere. Holy Ghost <laughs> just done told me devil will awful offer people positions in other churches and they will take them looking like it is a plan of God but all along it's a tactic of the adversary trying to get Dennis to take his hands on the plow and he suffers the harvest. Help me somebody. Something just because it's a good idea doesn't mean it's a God kind of idea. Somebody say amen to that. Devil will offer you a promotion in your company. I'm not against promotions because God needs doctors and lawyers. Amen. Help me, Lord. I'm trying my best. Amen. But what I do know is this. Amen. If we are seeking after worldly promotions only because we are in love with the fruit that it brings, you're going to bring a harvest, but it's not going to come from the field in which God planted you in and ask you to put your hands on the plow. Help me, Lord. i got to tend my garden. Help me, Lord. I got to ask you a question. Are your eyes fast and straight forward on what God has called you to do? What God has sent you in this church to do? Keep your eyes onward. I feel like some of y'all ain't getting this now. You're ready for me to be quiet. There is pressure to give up, and there is pressure to turn back. Amen. There is pressure. Help me, Lord. Because there's been times in my life in serving the Lord that I've gotten entangled with stuff that I should have never been entangled with. And I ain't talking about sin. But it becomes sin when it becomes that weight to you in serving the Lord. Come on, somebody. Huh? Is that all right? Your arms ain't getting tired, are they? Huh? Are you okay? Because some, I mean, sometimes our arms will get tired in serving the Lord. And sometimes our hands will get a little numb. Y'all was an Eleazar that we read about the other day that held on to that sword so long in the middle, him in the field, fighting off those Philistines. That the Bible said that as him and his hands, him and they fastened to a sword, they had to peel his fingers off of that sword. That's the way we need to be with this plow tonight. We might get tired, we might get weary, but we need to say, God, give me some more strength in these hands, and I'll be able to hold on. I'm getting tired, and I'm getting 
getting weary. Amen. From this fight. I'm getting tired and weary working in the field. But I'll tell you, they'll have to pry. Amen. My plow out of my hands when I cross over Jordan. And I'm not going to let it go. And I'm not going to look back. Because there's danger in looking back. They were trying to get y'all's attention with stuff in your life. Come on now. Come on. Come on. And it seems really important to you. Come on now. But if you look at it in light of the Word of God, it's valueless. Come on, somebody. Three of you. That's shameful. Because the devil's trying to do it to all of you. Did you pray well this week? Or were you preoccupied looking somewhere else instead of hands on the plow? Have you worked any this week in the field? Come on, somebody. Have you worked any this week in the field of the Lord? Well, Lord, I didn't sin. I didn't, do no, I didn't ask you if you sinned or not. I asked you if you had your hands on the plow actively working in the field to bring forth harvest. Oh, Lord, you getting tired yet? Help me, Lord. Can I go about five more minutes? How many know tonight there are dangers in letting go of the plow? Come on, somebody. I feel, I feel this right here. Amen, hallelujah. Hey, Y'all going to think I'm crazy tonight. Sister Bailey, will you come grab a hold of that plow tonight? But Brother Dennis, let her have it tonight. Let her have that plow. Because how many knows we all got our own plow to deal with? Everybody's got their own plow. And that's a little hard to get used to, ain't it? Imagine now having a horse hooked up to that or a mule trying to lay off a line or two of corn, a row of corn. Hey, but here's what the Holy Ghost begin to tell me. And my sister Bailey is going to represent all the singers in our church. The Lord told me to tell the singers today that unless we keep our eyes and our hands upon the plow and looking onward, then we will lose our anointing and what God has placed in our life to do. When we begin to look off to the left or to the right concerning talent or another church to go to or a bigger avenue or venue to sing, when we start looking at talent, the Holy Ghost is taking our eyes off the road in front of us. We begin to lose the anointing and we begin to affect the harvest that is in this church. I come and tell the singers and musicians you need your hands on the plow because you have a great part to do in the harvest of the kingdom of heaven. My God, I wish you all would help me tonight. Couldn't get some of y'all off. You see if I tried to. And I've been trying for six months for some of you. We all got work to do. Amen. And all your hands on your plow. It's easy to let, amen, a jealous spirit, I don't know where that comes from, come up in a pulpit between the musicians and singers. Come on. I've watched it since shot entire churches apart because somebody sung more songs than somebody else. If that's the mentality you have, honey, come to the altar and repent and get your hands back on your plow. I don't care. Amen. She sings 105 songs and all you get to do is whistle. It doesn't matter. You ought to be praying for her. Help me, holy. Keep your hands on the plow. Don't you look one way or the other. It will affect the harvest in this house. Hallelujah. Brother Dennis, go up and take that plow from your wife. Brother Dennis represents those in ministry. God's calling this man of God to preach the gospel. Somebody shout amen. amen. Give honor to this man of God. Give honor where honor is due. But all of a sudden, here's what the devil, the devil's not going to come to Brother Dennis and say, oh, Dennis, oh, you just need to quit and let go of that plow and go to hell. Devil don't operate like that. But you want to know where he starts? Ain't nobody in that church want to hear nothing you got to say. Ain't nobody down there want to hear a message you got to preach. Everybody thought you'd done bad the other night, but they just wasn't going to say so. They told you how good you'd done, but they really thought you'd done bad. Pastor didn't like nothing you had to say. You know what he's trying to get you to do? Look at me, Dennis. Look at me. Let go of that plow on one hand. It affects the harvest when it gets Dennis's mind off of 
of what it's supposed to be. Grab a hold of that plow, sir. Hey, Amen. You know what we need to do? Right while we're plowing, and that old devil come beside of us and start lying like that. You ought to say, devil, the Lord called me to preach. He's anointed me to do so. Then leave me alone. Get out of here. I'm not taking my hand on a plow. I'm not taking my eyes off the road in front of me. I got to work to do. There's danger in looking back. Help me, Holy Ghost. Brother Dennis represents everybody in ministry in this church. Because the devil's after your anointing. He is after your harvest. Somebody shout amen. We might be long-winded tonight. But everybody has been called to show up to heaven one day with an expected harvest. Come on. Brother JJ, when the Lord saved you, I believe, help me, Lord. Amen. I believe there was a number that, that is in the Lord's mind and in the record books that He's already written out for your life. It's a total number of the people you are supposed to reach in your life. But when we get to heaven, the Lord's going to expect the harvest that you bring versus the harvest you should have brought. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me. And the devil wants your harvest. Because if he can get you concentrated on all those lies, then you ain't concentrating on what you're supposed to be doing. When you are concentrating on the lies, you know what you do? You go home and say, baby, ain't nobody love me. Sister Bradley, they don't want me down there to touch her. Sister Bradley comes home and says, they don't want me there. They got better singers. They got better musicians. He's affected the harvest already. Because you got your eyes off the, and your hand off the plow. And you started looking at what the devil was trying to draw your attention to. He calls you at that moment to overlook that soul that was intersecting your path that you could have affected with the gospel. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to say this. I'm going to look at Sister Shauna. Help me, Lord. Because some of y'all go home. I'm preaching to you, honey. Because <laughs> I don't want to see nobody's reaction. Y'all, some of y'all go home and say, that preacher, he don't even like me. He don't want me there. He, is, he didn't talk to me. He didn't shake my hand. You know what the devil just caused? He caused your harvest to be shortened. It is the devil's objective that you become an immature Christian. Help me, Lord. I had gossiping on my heart today for some reason. Because every time you flap your jaws in this church concerning something or somebody, you just affected the harvest. Talk to me, saint. What you got to do, help me, Lord. I don't want to pick nobody out that's a gossiper. I'm, a, I'm just going to help me a little. I'm not even going to go there. Y'all get mad at me. But what I come to tell you is the devil wants to try and drive wedges between you and your brother or your sister next to you. But listen, Brother David, I've watched a parent. Come here, Brother Couch. Stand next to me. I watched Papa as he put Kate and Meg together. Amen. They begin to be harnessed up that plow together. Amen. Kate couldn't be going that way and Meg going this way. It just wasn't going to work. But they had to stand together and they were harnessed together and they were walking together in unison, plowing off rows. And that's the kind of unity that we need to have in the house of God. When the devil comes along and says, they don't like you, they don't want you. Just tell everybody how bad they are. I got news for the devil. You're not going to affect our harvest. There's danger in looking back. Sister Judy, will you take the plow? Sister Judy is going to represent all of our teachers in this house. Hear me, men and women of God. I said, well, you, ever, you ever done that for real, Sister Judy? No. She's going to represent our teachers. Yeah, all, all, the, all the kids in here, I want y'all stand right in the middle. Stand in the middle. And Sunday school, Sunday school kids, stand in the middle. Come quickly right in the middle. 
Help me, Lord. Oh, yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. But I just, just play. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to quit. Because if the devil can get the teachers' minds off the teaching and steal their hunger and their desire for the word of God, he'll affect the harvest. I say this with as much respect as I can. Because I know we live, live and lead busy lives. But if you open up that Bible on Sunday morning, expecting to be ready to bring the anointing of God down in your Sunday school room, honey, you need to inspect. Am I where I'm supposed to be in the Lord? Or does somebody else with a burden need to take my class? Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me in here. It's not that we are bad people. It's not that we set out one day to lose our desire. Amen. To take our eyes off of what we're supposed to be doing. But the devil's offered a lot of things. Judy, turn around here and look at me. Take one hand off of You see what happened? She, she, the steadiness of the plow went away. She can't turn or loose of it all the way and turn around. But the devil's trying to get teachers in this house. Amen. Focused on other things. Amen. Besides the children in your classroom. But I got news for the devil tonight. Holy Ghost going to stir up uh, some teachers in this house uh, that's going to fall before God again uh, and weep and cry for the children uh, that's in their classrooms. Because if he can get you focused on the world, he'll affect the harvest in your Sunday school room. If he can get you focused on, a, on more stuff, and he'll steal your harvest. Sister Shauna, come take this plow. Kids, you may be hold on. Teachers, I want you to look very well at this here. You ought to show up in your class every day, every Sunday, with an expectation to see the anointing of God moving in their lives. You ought to show up with an expectation that the Holy Ghost work through you to bring conviction to their hearts. Somebody say amen to me. It's easy for y'all to say it that ain't teachers. I want the teachers to shout amen with me too. Because that's what we need to be doing in this house. We need some men and women of God. Brother David Council started teaching the adults. This man of God's got a responsibility now. And everybody's sitting over here on this side on Sunday as he sits down in the chair and looks over that book. And everybody in this house will walk away from that Sunday school lesson a little closer to God than they did when they walked in that morning. But the devil's trying to get us focused on life and just living alive and giving the Lord, amen, about 70%. But I got news today. It's either all or it's nothing. The Lord accepts nothing less. It's all Him or it's all of the world. You may be seated to Him. Y'all still love me? Is this, okay? Is this right? Somebody say amen. You're preaching right, Pastor. You're preaching right, Pastor. Sister Shauna represents all those tonight. That the Lord has got plans for, for giftings in this house. We've been studying about spiritual gifts. And she represents those that God has already ordained to operate in gifts. Because there's some of you in this house. And you've not got to that place yet. Why? I understand there's a time and a season for harvest. But some of us ain't got there because we can't keep our eyes on the front of the plow. I remember very well a little church up on East Pittsburgh Church Road all the way up the top of the hill. I believe you know the building I'm talking about. All the way to the top. I was standing in the pulpit one night preaching the word of God. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me very clearly. 
He said, there's three people in this house that I have placed gifts and callings in their life. And the Lord said, and here's who they are. And he told me two, two young ladies. And he said, I have given them the gift of prophecy. And the prophesy and the interpretation of tongues. And this little woman right here is one of them. And there was another young man there that night. And the Lord said, I called him to preach the gospel. From that time, I started noticing a gift beginning to work in Sister Shauna's life. How it was in the prayer lines and in the middle of church services. She'd slip off and go to somebody. And I'd feel the unction of the Holy Ghost knowing prophecy was coming. And I'd look at Shauna be prophesying to somebody. Her, her interpreting tongues for the message of heaven that, that God needed them to hear. Listen, I'm going to tell you all something. As some of y'all in this house tonight get God is wanting to put gifts in your life. Wanting to place callings and anointings in your life. But the reason why you ain't got there yet is because, Sister Shauna, look at me. Turn around and look at me. All the way. You got a hand off of the plow. And you can't see. Where you, don't, don't you put your hand back on that plow. Turn, turn, turn back around here. Let that plow go. Don't be so, trying to be so strong with it. The, the, the harvest begins to be a fake. Look at that. She can't hold it up with one hand. It's impossible to do. Why? Because that plow is not intended for a one-handed use. And tonight, the gifts and the callings of God, they are without repentance. God has placed them in your life and has led up to you tonight to say, God, I'm going to put my hands back on this plow because I've heard you talk to me in the middle of the night and I've heard you speak to me and I know what you want me to do, but help me to put my eyes back on the harvest and lies in front of me because without the gifts and the callings, the harvest will be affected. All of y'all got a plow. Lord's give a plow to all of you. And what are you doing? What are you doing? He didn't save you to go out of this world, out of this house of God tonight and just live in the world. He called you to come out of it be separate when they holler at you come on Gilbert let's go I got a plow to hold on to I ain't got time when the devil says no just lay it down man it gets getting hard it's getting hard for you to do it just lay it down I know you're weary oh devil I got a plow amen the Lord's needing me to bring a harvest and I don't have time to let go amen if I get him off this plow the devil's gonna have to drag me off of it because I've got some harvest in front of me you got harvest in front of you and you will stand before the Lord and tell him why you chose not to put your hands on this gospel plow. You'll stand and look him in the eyes. And you'll have to give him a reason why. But he'll say you're not fit to be used in this kingdom. I'm going to lay it down a minute. Count said, man, that's an old plow, ain't it? I said, yep. That belonged to my papa. He used it for a long time. He said, ain't many people using plows like that no more. Nope. These barns all across America. The plows laying in them. That ain't nobody using no more. I don't look as good as what it used to. You see this bird Dave? You see this big crack in this board? It's weathered a few storms. It's had to endure some rain. Huh? You see these bolts and these chains, how rusted they are? They've been drugged through a lot of mud. 
lot, lot of dirt. Huh? You see this old blade? She ain't as pointed as she used to be. Because it's had to endure some rocks. There have been times that I've heard that. Holler, whoa, son. You take that plow. And he say, back up. Back up a little bit. He take that plow. Pull it out of the ground. Lay it to the side. And reach and grab a rock. And throw it off to the side. All right, son. Fire it back up again. There have been times that we've felt like we've been pulled on. And we pulled rocks on the ground. And our blades ain't as sharp as they used to be. Our wood might be a little dried out and cracked. Because it's seen some storms. And these old handles up here. And when they ain't as wide as they used to be. Why? Because they've been gripped a whole lot. And my God, if you could have seen the hands of my papa before he passed away, and when he held out his hands, they wouldn't have saw a spot on that man's hand over. Oh, I thank you, Holy Ghost, to feel you right now. And when you want to know what caused that man's hands to be in the shape that they were in, it's all the time that he's been out there in the field with his hands on a little plow, and he fought and he wrestled that plow, and that ground he was tilling in, but he didn't let the ground win. He didn't let the rocks win, and it scarred him up, and it scarred his hands, but when he let this walk of life, honey, laid his plow down and it went home to be with the Lord. My God in heaven, I come to tell you, there's a danger in you looking back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like I preached all night tonight. Oh God. I watched a man slip with a plow one time. He thought he'd do it one-handed. And he took this hand off the plow, and the plow laid over. And immediately when this plow lays over, the shape of the blade pushes the plow that way. So when you're cultivating in the middle of them taters, or in the middle of that corn, and you lay your hand off of it, and that, and that plow pushes, guess what you do? You cut down the corn next to the plow. You better keep your eyes. You better keep your eyes on what the Lord's calling you to do. You better keep your eyes fixed on what God has placed you in this church to do. Some of y'all, Lord's been dealing with you all my stuff you need to be doing, how you need to be engaged in ministry. But you help me, Lord. But you are not willing to lay down the remote to the TV. You're not willing to let go of the things of the world a little bit of overtime for a little bit more money, for a little more of the world. But the Lord is saying at the plow, son, at the plow, son, as souls are being affected by your unwillingness to plow. Wow, you are filled. I'm quitting. But I'm going to say this tonight. There's backsliders in this house tonight. Because you used to have a hold of that plow. But you don't no more. You used to know what it was like to have your hands on that plow. And see that fresh dirt turn. And you sit back and you look at that road when you got done with it. And you seen how you affected the army. You used to know what it was like. Come here, Brother Dennis. To have the Lamb of God in front of you leading you. You used to know what it was like to be in the kingdom and in the field. But somewhere along the line, you let go of your plow. And your life's a mess tonight. I said, your life's a mess. As the Bible said, will y'all give me just a few more minutes? Because some of y'all accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
but you got your eyes off of him. And when it was all said and done, you found yourself out of the field. And every day, you think about how good it felt to be plowing. For after they have escaped the pollutions of this world, and the... And through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and they are again uh, entangled therein and overcome the latter end is, with them is worse than the beginning somebody shout amen to me somebody saying we're doing away with once in grace doctrine tonight because the Bible said that if you've ever come to know the Lord come to the knowledge of the truth through Jesus Christ a Savior and you become then entangled again in the world. He said the latter end of your life is way worse than it would have ever been if you had never came to the Lord. Somebody, come on church, I need y'all. Sorry, Sean, I need y'all right now. I'm talking to backsliders in this house, church. It's time for you to help plow field right here, right now, at this very moment, because folk need to come back to the field tonight. The Bible said for it had been better for them to have, amen, to have known, not to have known the way of righteousness. Then after that they've known it, they would turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Can I tell you, there are dangers tonight. And you letting go of the plow, amen, of the kingdom of heaven. Somebody in this house tonight used to be in a field, but you let go and your life has become a mess. It's worse than you ever thought it would be. It's worse than it ever was. Why? Because the Bible said it would be better for you to have never come come to the Lord and they came to him and they walked away from it all. He said your life would be miserable. Somebody in this house tonight is living in that miserable condition because they remember what it's like to have a plow in the hand and have Jesus by their side. Come on church. Let's pray tonight. We need to, we need to pray. He was lost in his hand. Jesus said, when the evil spirit goeth out of a man. When you got saved, there was an evil spirit in you that departed. Because Jesus don't leave nobody the same. The new religion, Brother Dennis says, come to Jesus and you'll gradually get better. I say, no, when you get to Jesus, it all changes. He'll make you act different and talk different and even dress different. Hallelujah. Lord God in heaven. When that evil spirit goes out of a man, the Bible said he goes walking through dry places looking for rest. He's in misery looking for a place to abide. This is Bible, y'all. Goes looking for a place to enter into. But when he finds no place to go, guess where he goes to, Brother Dennis? He goes back where he come from. And if he comes and he finds Dennis with his hands on a plow looking straight ahead, he tries to find a way in, but he finds that Dennis's life is filled up with the Lord, and he goes back walking again. Come on, saints. And guess what he does? Brother David Couch, he looks for a place to abide, a place to go to, and he cannot find anywhere. Now take your hand off the plow, Dennis. And all of a sudden he comes to Dennis again and he realizes Dennis ain't where he used to be in the Lord. Dennis is letting the plow go. You know what he does? He finds his opportunity to go back to the same place that he left out of in the beginning. And the Bible said that he goes and he finds a, a man about seven more unclean spirits and he tells them where to come and they enter into that man. And the Bible said the latter end of that man was worse than the beginning. Why? Because he had 